Welcome to our podcast. Could you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Martin Trotz. I'm a partner at Rawlinson & Hunter in the Cayman Islands, and I lead the solvency and restructuring team. Can you tell me a little about RNH's restructuring presence in Cayman? For example, how big is the office? What sort of professional services does the firm handle? And who are your main clients typically? Sure, yeah. So, so RNH Restructuring is one of the four departments in, in Rawlinson & Hunt alongside the, the, the trust, the corporate team, the, the fund fiduciary team and fund administration team. And as, you, as the name suggests, the restructuring team, we focus on solvency and restructuring work, distress directorship uh, appointment and the like. The office uh, in total in, in Cayman is, uh, we're, we're 85 people. Within the restructuring team, we are 10 strong. So that includes three appointment takers and we tend to focus on um, on the three main areas I'd say one is solvent wind downs which is uh, was handling funds or, or corporates that are uh, in the latter stages of their life cycle and, and require a managed exit managed closures on the voluntary side of things we also um, take directorship appointments in distress scenarios uh, so akin to a, a chief restructuring officer type role uh, we'll sit on boards and, and assist in challenging circumstances, often uh, in a distressed context, and then uh, and then lastly, we handle the insolvency side of the spectrum, which is insolvent liquidations here in, in the Cayman Islands, pr- provisional liquidation appointments and, and receiverships. And I'd say it goes in uh, in waves depending on the economic cycle, but typically a portfolio of our work is um, is sort of 60, 70 percent on the insolvency side, and then 30, 40 percent on the voluntary liquidation, voluntary wine down and directorship side of things. Our clients are, are the appointments really, the, the, the companies on behalf of whom we act as fiduciaries, either as liquidators or as, as directors. And our business typically comes from uh, either internally within the, the Rawlinson and Hunter network or internationally. We're a member firm of a network called Nexia International, which is a global affiliation of, of accountancy firms in most of the jurisdictions in the in the world. And, uh, and through intermediaries, we get referrals and we give referrals out out to the likes of the law firms, other trust companies, other other companies in the in the corporate field, um, from other insolvency firms uh, in other jurisdictions. Thank you. What about the composition of your workforce? Are they mainly locals, or does a significant contingent come in from overseas? Given the the nature of the work and the, the specialist nature of the work being uh, insolvency, we tend to to have uh, quite a high proportion of, of overseas workers. Our team of ten is made up of uh, we have three Caymanians, uh, we have two permanent residents, the other five are work permit holders. We would prefer to have more Caymanians uh, in the team. We've in the past our team has been up in sort of 50, 60 percent of the team has been Caymanian. The firm as a whole is is around 60 percent Caymanian across all of our business units but um, it tends to be that of that sort of magnitude and then we we train up our staff and our Caymanians on the insolvency side when they join. What do you look for in a new hire Martin in particular somebody coming in potentially from abroad? From abroad we look for uh, qualifications so we would only ever recruit somebody who has a, a professional qualification uh, accountancy designation for example or sort of legal qualification occasionally but mostly accountancy and uh, preferably insolvency qualification as well such as uh, the the JIEB in the UK albeit that's not a, a requirement and ideally depending on the on the level we're recruiting into a level of of insolvency experience insolvency and restructuring experience um, is what we would typically look for other attributes are um, you've got to have a I think a sense of of adventure, I would say, when when you're thinking of moving to any new country, any new jurisdiction, and particularly in the Caribbean, you know, a unique place to live. And so, we would want our new joiners to settle into the island as as quickly as possible and feel comfortable in the island. And so, part of that is what we would look for as well, and and try and uh, get a sense of when we're interviewing new staff. For many hires, moving to a new country such as Cayman. To work is a big thing and uh, you mentioned that uh, a sense of adventure is part of the package and I'm sure it is. What sort of support does RNH provide in terms of relocation and work permits? It is a big thing. It's sometimes a, a daunting step, but it's once you've done it once, I'd say it's it's not as challenging as you might first expect moving to a new country and particularly moving to a country like the Islands. It's uh, the jump from we would typically hire, for example, from countries like uh, the UK, South Africa, Australia, Canada uh, in the most part. And, and if you're coming from the, those countries, it's not too much of a leap. We would support new hires uh, with a relocation 
education package for them and their families. That typically involves the flights come to the island, obviously, and then um, support them with accommodation package and car hire, for example, in the first few weeks of being on island and, uh, and support as much as possible when they get here in terms of settling into the community. The work permit process is done whilst the uh, new hire is, is off island. So we would uh, apply for the work permit. We handle all of that ourselves. We would ask the candidate to fill in all the paperwork and send in all of the uh, identification documents, etc., that required for the work permit application. But then in terms of dealing with K-Man immigration, we would handle all of those matters ourselves. What sort of training can a new hire expect when they join? We have an induction when new hires join the firm. That's training on firm systems and our policies and procedures. A part of that also in, involves training in Cayman Islands restructuring and insolvency procedures, which we handle all internally. And then uh, depending on where the new hire is in their exams, we have supported certain of our staff through qualifications such as the ACCA and through other qualifications that are relevant to the industry. And then on Ireland, there are network so there are memberships that, that offer training, such as the CEPA, which is the Cayman Islands Institute of Professional Accountants. They offer a, a training program throughout the year uh, of various different topics. And we would support staff who want to uh, go on courses that are, that are held locally, for example. Fantastic. And for somebody actually working at the company, if they join, how would you describe the company culture? What could they expect? Rawlinson and Hunter is an old firm that has been established in Canaan for several decades and you get a sense of being part of a family in the firm. Many of the of the staff are either Canaanian or have been here for many years and have, have become Canaanian as a result. And so there's a lot of experience and a lot of support that the firm offers for the new joiners when they come across. And then the team in RH restructuring, the, the culture is one of you know, working hard when it's required, but also recognizing that we live in a beautiful place and it's a very outdoorsy lifestyle. And so allowing staff and the team to take time off at certain times when that's appropriate. So a very much sort of work hard, play hard culture. I can imagine the quality of life there must be amazing when you're uh, playing hard. Um, it's a fantastic environment to live in, a dream place for many people. When it comes to working at the firm, what sort of opportunities would you say there are for career progression? There's every opportunity you would expect in any other professional services firm, really. So we are a partnership and there are opportunities to progress all the way through to partner. We prefer to nurture the staff, develop the staff so that they progress through the firm and, and ultimately make it as high as their aspirations want to go. And so there's no barriers to doing that for anybody that wants to join the firm. Is there much scope for anybody to transfer within different locations of the firm? Because R&H has got a presence in, in a number of different jurisdictions. There is, yes, that's absolutely. Rawlins & Hunter has offices in 11 countries around the world and all of the offshore centres uh, such as the Cayman Islands, uh, BVI, Bermuda, Channel Islands, Singapore. And so there are opportunities to transfer within Rawlins & Hunter. And then we have a restructuring presence in uh, the British Virgin Islands. And so so there's opportunities to transfer to, to the BVI if that, uh, that works for the firm and for the individual. Personally, I relocated out, out here in 2014. A brief stay in Cayman and then I spent three years in our BVI office in the restructuring team over there and then uh, back here in, in Cayman for the last three and a half years. So certainly opportunities if individuals um, would like to explore that. Thank you, Martin. Famously, there's no income tax in Cayman, but what's the cost of living like? Is it expensive and can people save living there? People can certainly save living here. As you say, there are no direct taxes, no income taxes. There are duties that uh, are levied on goods coming into the country and, and therefore the people would find coming to the island that buying things in the supermarket, for example, is more expensive than, than they would have expected from, from where they've come from. Um, and so the, the cost of living is slightly higher than uh, the being, for example, in the, in the UK. However, overall, it's with no taxes, you're definitely better off. A take home pay is typically would typically be, be higher, uh, depending on, on people's spending habits, obviously. Uh, obviously. <laughs> You know, saving requires an element of wanting to do that, and, but, but there's certainly the option to do that here. And there's pension schemes on the island, for example, as well, and, and savings plans. So overall, you'd be net better off than elsewhere, typically. Thank you. Everyone has an image in their own mind of what life might be like in the Caribbean. Can you tell me, what's it really like? Myself and my wife, we've been um, 
out of the UK now for six and a half years. We, we absolutely love it. It's a great place to live. The work is challenging. The restructuring insolvency work is different to onshore jurisdictions. Uh, we, we typically are dealing with financial restructuring of topco entities, not so much operational hands-on restructuring that you would expect on an onshore jurisdiction. But nevertheless, the cases are fascinating and uh, intellectually challenging as you would find elsewhere. And so you get that work challenge, but also you're in a beautiful country in the in the Caribbean. The weekends are superb as a result. It's a very outdoorsy lifestyle. If you're into your exercise and fitness, there's countless opportunities to, to, to do various activities. Uh, we have to put up with the, the hurricane season, which is obviously a downside from June to November each year is, is, is our hurricane season. Aside from that, it's a great place to live and good links elsewhere. So several flights a day into the, into the US, uh, the UK, and, and so connectivity is um, very easy to get to get on and off the island fantastic you've painted a very vivid picture it sounds hard to beat thank you so much for coming on martin it's really appreciated thank you my pleasure tom and thanks to all of you for joining us we'll see you on the next podcast